Hey folks, so I'm here today to talk to you about this Rickenbacker 4002 bass. But before we dig into it, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my friend Ryan Brady. This bass originally belonged to Ryan. He was a really dear friend of mine, a musical brother. We lost Ryan on Thanksgiving of 2020. Um, a little bit of backstory. I first met him in high school. He was in the high school jazz band. And I remember being in the gym one day watching the jazz band perform and I saw this incredibly weird looking instrument. It just immediately grabbed my attention. I had just started getting into the bass guitar, but I had no idea what this instrument was. So I went home that day and I looked it up and lo and behold, it was a Rickenbacker 4003. Ryan had this beautiful fire glow 4003 and it just completely bowled me over and I had to have one, so I saved up every penny I could over the next couple of years, and I eventually got one. Um, I was a little bit starstruck by Ryan back then. He was a great ahead of me, and he was an incredibly talented bass player as well as piano and keyboard player, just total musical talent. Um, but he noticed that I was kind of looking up to him. He noticed all of a sudden this kid showing up to school with the same bass as him, and instead of you know being competitive about it or scoffing at it he he comes up and talks to me and you know he says hey i really like what you've been doing i'm starting this band why don't you join on bass i'm going to play keys in it and that was the start of an incredible musical journey for me i was in several bands with ryan throughout the years learned so much from him about everything from you know bass playing songwriting all sorts of different kinds of music but most importantly friendship and mentorship and and that was kind of ryan's superpower right he was a mentor he could see what you were into he could see your passion and your talent and find ways to bring that out of you and support you in that and to not make you feel stupid about it as you were learning you know he really encouraged growth all of the time um, after college ryan went on to be really successful in the music business he worked for atlantic records he lived in new york and then eventually la and just did really great things in the industry and throughout all of these years, we kept in touch, and he was also really supportive when I started building bass guitars and was super excited about that. I was actually in the process of building Ryan a bass when he passed. We had actually just completed it, and I was <laughs> looking forward to bringing it out and surprising him with it. He had requested that I build a bass that looks like Roy Orbison. So we did a completely blacked out Midwestern 2 with all sorts of fancy, fancy touches and a custom engraving on the pickguard and everything. It's kind of a little bit of a slap in the face that he never got to see that bass, but I'm sure he would have been in, in stitches. I can hear his laugh when I think about showing it to him for the first time. So I can't overstate enough that I don't think I would have become a bass player or really continued on this journey the way I have if it wasn't for Ryan. He really opened the door for me and helped me walk right on through it. So thank you, Ryan, for that. Which brings me to this bass. This bass belonged to him, and his wife bequeathed this to me very generously. She knew how much Ryan meant to me and how much we bonded over Rickenbackers throughout the years. So it's very meaningful to have this. Um, let's talk a little bit about the 4002. The 4002 was introduced in the late 70s and had a pretty short lifespan. I think they were discontinued sometime in the mid 80s. Um, Rickenbacker was going for something a little bit more premium at the time. They were using curly maple or bird's eye maple for the bodies, ebony for the fingerboards, sometimes rosewood. They had the, you know, the checker binding and all, all the good stuff, right? The pickup setup is a little bit different. One catalog advert has them mentioned as high and low impedance pickups. And I think some of the originals had not only the Rico Sound stereo jack, but another low impedance jack so that you could plug the bass directly into a, a, you know, a studio mixing board and record that way. Kind of a fad that was going on around that time. I know these pickups to just be the Rickenbacker HB1 humbuckers. Um, in this bass, I'm not sure if the originals were slightly different. This bass just has one mono jack, uh, two volumes, two tones, and a three-way switch. Very simple. If you know the Rickenbacker high gain single coils, that grind and that mid-range bite that those are known for, these HB1s are completely different. They're much more mellow and subdued, uh, not as much top end being humbuckers, and they're just kind of, you know, a nice sturdy, solid sound, a little bit cleaner as well. So this bass is a completely different animal. I also have it strung up with some GHS pressure wound sort of half round strings uh, to just kind of accentuate that. 
A couple of unique things about this one. It's got a maple fingerboard. We've got this British racing green high gloss finish. Um, Rickenbacker has some of the best glossy finishes in the world. And uh, we've got the black hardware. I don't think Rickenbacker has officially reissued this instrument. I think they've just been knocking around with a few of these at the shop. Um, Ryan actually, before he passed, visited Rickenbacker and saw this at the factory. And I think it was just kind of there as sort of a prototype, but he asked if he could buy it from them and they said, yes, I know of at least one other in existence. And I think there might be a few more of these that have been kicking around throughout the years, but certainly they're a rarity. Um, it's got the standard uh, 33 and a half inch scale length that Rickenbacker is known for. And it's got their updated bridge, which has these roller saddles and individually intonatable um, saddles as well. And it's designed to eliminate that tail lift that some of those vintage Rickenbacker bridges are so infamous for. We also still have the foam mute there accessible by those thumb screws. Um, other than that, not much else to talk about. It's a really unique flavor on an incredible lineage of instruments. I'm excited for you to hear it. And this one's for you, Uncle Salsa. Love you, buddy.
Like the moon, it's gone too soon.